if you'd chosen to be on the cricket team, this probably isn't a helpful analogy for women because I've never actually played cricket, but it did, <laughs> it did help me. Um, if you'd chosen to be on the cricket team, even if you're, it's raining and you don't go out to bat or, or whatever, you're still part of the team. And I think for me, even in the times where I'm like, God, you don't exist. Uh, I've, I've just felt deeply within myself that um, I'm part of the team, <laughs> that you know, God has called me to, to follow him. And you know, even uh, sometimes I'm like, I feel like God's got all, got all the good cards, you know, <laughs> you can never outwit God. <laughs> and, um, and that's really frustrating at times. Like, I want to understand why there's suffering in the world. I want to understand you know, all of these things that are impossible to understand. Um, God has all the good cards and that frustrates me. <laughs> but I trust that because he has all the good cards, actually he knows how my life fits into this picture. And he knows how everyone else's lives fit together and and that that does give me peace and security and and fundamentally a deep trust even if I can't get my head around it. Uh, I studied mathematics at Leeds and got this amazing job as a mathematician and so I was working in future systems development which basically meant just having lots of fun with aeroplanes and cameras and, um, and maths and what could be better than this? Uh, and the guy that I sat next to at work was a Christian and he'd read his Bible every lunchtime and it really fascinated me because I thought that Christianity was just really for weak people who needed a bit of a crutch in life. And um, so we ended up having lots of conversations over the course of about six years. I decided that maybe I should switch my thinking and actually I suppose, ask the question, if God does exist, then what should I do? And, and that, that change in, in how I approached the question made an opportunity, I think, for me to have an experience of God's love. And, and in the end, that was what shifted things away from being a very rational exploration of faith to feeling like I had encountered the love of God and I had to respond to that with everything that was within me. One of the, the joys about being ordained and, and being a priest is to journey with people and see what God's doing in their lives. Sitting there in my office um, working away ready to go down to church a bit later and I had a just a very strong urge that I must go right then and so weirdly uh, I did actually get up and go right then uh, rather than ignore the strong urge. Uh, picked up my bag, walked out the door, started going down the right hand side of the road being a creature of habit and then um, as I'm walking down there I felt that I should be on the other side of the road. So I crossed over to the other side of the road and saw a lady a bit further down the road putting her bin out. And I saw that she was struggling to um, peel off one of those sticky numbers uh, to stick on the bin. So I stopped and said to her, can I, can I help you with that? She passed me the number, I start to peel it off and she says to me, my husband died this morning. And I was, um, slightly speechless um, but also amazed that I was kind of in the right place at the right time for her and we had an opportunity to talk about that and I could pray with her and and it was it was a significant moment for her because they'd been married for nearly 50 years she never put the bin out before and just me appearing right at that moment as she said to me later felt like someone had sent me to her and I said to her, I think someone did send me to you. <laughs> um, I ended up uh, taking her husband's funeral and, and it was an amazing privilege and has been a privilege over the last few months to um, continue to be alongside them as a family.